Hi, I'm Dr. Heidi Cook. I'm the owner and the medical director of the Spa at West Glen in West Des Moines, Iowa, and this is the Dr. Heidi Cook Show. On this show, we will cover topics that range from health and beauty to wellness and lifestyle. So for today, I want you to start by sitting back and imagining the following scenario. It's a Monday morning, and you are rolling over in bed to look at the clock, and you jolt out of bed. You realize you're an hour late. The kids aren't up, and you're running around. So you get in the shower, and you hear the dog doing something in the family room. And all of a sudden, you realize the dog has thrown up on the carpet, and you have to clean that mess up. You run out of the house, grab a protein shake, get in the car, and are running through rush hour traffic, and you spill your protein shake down the front of your shirt. So you are running to work, you go to the coffee shop, you grab a coffee, you put your credit card through, and it's declined. You go back into the car, and you go, and you realize you're 10 minutes late for that meeting with the boss. Is this stressful? Absolutely. In the previous episode, we covered what stress is, what it does to your body, and how it, we get into a real dysfunctional loop with our stress. So today what I want to do is cover the management side of that. We are going to look at different ways to handle stress, what we can do to maintain stress level, to reduce it, and to avoid it. And we will also have on a guest today. She's one of our licensed massage therapists from the spa at West Glen, where we will talk about different types of massage that have to do not only with relaxation, but also the other benefits um, that we can get from that. So when we return, we will look at stress management. Welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about stress management. And to begin, I want to review a little of what we covered in the last episode about what stress is, how our body responds, and um, some basic components of what our stressors look like. As you remember, there are four different categories that your body sees as stress. And your body will react the same to no matter what category the stressor is in. The first one is fluctuations in your blood sugar. So unhealthy diet, skipping meals, too much sugar. The other, another one is inflammation. So whether that's from chronic illness, from eating too much sugar, or from environmental toxins that we're all exposed to. Another category is sleep disturbance. So people who have insomnia, people who have sleep apnea, that is a stressor on your body. And then the last one is the emotional and mental stress that we all typically think of when we talk about stress. We also covered what a stressor looks like. Typically there are four components. Stressors can have one or all four. Those are that it is a novelty, so something new to you. Another one is that it's unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen. One is that it's a threat, so it can be a threat either physically or emotionally to you. And the last is that there's some sort of loss of control. So that is what is, looks like as a stressor. What our body does is our brain detects that there is a stress. It will communicate with your adrenal glands to release cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone that gives you that fight or flight response and does things such as increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure, puts you on alert. Ideally, how this works is you have the stress, your body releases cortisol, it recognizes the cortisol is there and doing its job, and therefore it will then cut down on the level of cortisol and everything stops. It's meant to be an acute or a short-term um, loop. So unfortunately, in our lifestyle, we have lots of stressors. Sometimes they're short stressors that occur frequently or we have big ones, and this whole HPA axis that we talked about becomes quite dysfunctional. So then we need to learn how to manage our stress. And that's what we're gonna talk about here um, is stress management. So the first thing that you need to do for stress management is you need to take inventory. And what this means is you need to look at what the stressors are in your life. There are online different ways to objectively look at stress. You can find checklists that will give a numeric value to each stressor. 
So something like death of a spouse is high at about 100, where a holiday with a family can be a stressor also, which is around 18. So at any given point, you can go through this checklist and give yourself kind of an objective view of how stressed you are. The other thing that you need to take note of is how you deal with your stressors. Um, most of the time it's in a negative fashion, whether it's drinking too much alcohol, whether it's binge eating or not eating enough, whether it's not wanting to get out of bed and just sleeping. Um, you need to take a look and see how you deal with stress. So that's the first step in stress management is just knowing where you are. The second is you need to exercise. You need to get your body moving. This is one of the best ways to decrease stress. Any exercise is good, but the studies have shown that if you have rhythmic, continuous motion, that is the best for decreasing stress. So what that would look like, especially if you're using your arms and legs, so what those look like is walking, running, swimming, or even something like Tai Chi to decrease stress. The third one is that you need to be socially engaged. And this is a hard one sometimes for people um, because we, whoops, I spelled that wrong, <laughs> because we need to um, have human communication in order to feel connected. What we typically do is we feel isolated and we feel um, like just turning inward. And what we actually need to do is reaching out to the people that can give us that good positive connection. And the next thing is we need to um, avoid things that we know are going to stress us out. A lot of us have stresses that we are very particular to us, but we know that they're going to stress us out. For example, perhaps it's um, the holiday family gatherings, or maybe it's going out with coworkers that you know every time you do it, you get stressed. So you need to avoid, what you, if you can, what stresses you out. And then if you can't avoid it, you need to alter how you deal with that. And this, I think, this is an important one, but it's also one of the more difficult ones because it involves um, communicating, it involves being open-minded, being tolerant, but really, you know, if you can't avoid family gatherings, it might involve having a discussion about what it is that is stressing everyone out and dealing with it that way. And the next one is that you need to then accept what you can't change. And I think an easy way to think about this one is if you have um, travel planned in January out of Iowa, you may two days beforehand be looking at that snowstorm that's going to hit on the day that you're traveling. That would stress a lot of people out. However, that's something that you can't do anything about. So it's one of those that you can't control the uncontrollable and we need to kind of get um, that into our minds that we just can't do anything about that. The last one is that you just need to have healthy living. And this deals with um, three of those categories, the blood sugar category, the inflammation, and the sleep. So you need to just lead a healthy lifestyle, um, low glycemic foods, decreasing your alcohol, decreasing your caffeine, taking care of yourself as far as any chronic diseases that you may have and then trying to do everything you can for um, good sleep. We talked about sleep hygiene in the last episode. And then the last one is that you need to take time to have fun and to relax. And some of us are um, okay at doing this, others not so much. Each day you need to take little short periods of time to focus on relaxing. And the one that I wanted to look at here is the relaxation um, portion. This can vary and for each person, very individual. It may be deep breathing techniques, which there are all kinds of instructions online for this. Um, there is a heart math, which is an organization that gives you a computer. Um, it's like a computer game, basically, that helps you to relax. Um, also, this can be exercising for you. It can be reading, whatever it is that relaxes you. A big one here that is becoming more popular, and there are a lot of apps for smartphones, there are computer programs for what's called guided meditation. And what that is, it can be, guided meditation can be aimed at something very general as far as just relaxation 
or for something like happiness, or it can be at a very direct goal. So if someone knows they're very pessimistic and wants to have a more positive outlook, um, there's guided meditations for that. What guided meditation is, it's that a narrator will take you through a scenario. It will take you through steps to first relax, focus on breathing, and then it will take you on kind of an imagery journey um, to a final goal. And the concept here is that your brain does not know an imaginary event from a real event. And so if you can go through this on a daily basis, this narrator will take you into relaxation, kind of have you focus on being positive or whatever the goal may be. Your brain does not necessarily know the difference, and so it works on the subconscious level of making this imaginary journey a real journey. So now what I'd like to do is focus on this last one, which is the fun and relaxation, especially on this relaxation portion. What we're going to do now is I'm going to bring on one of our licensed massage therapists from the spa at West Glen, and we're going to talk about different kinds of massage therapy, part of them aimed at exactly this relaxation, and also see what other benefits massage therapy can give to us. Welcome back. Today we've been talking about stress management and ways to deal with our stress, trying to um, kind of compete and take care of that dysfunctional loop that we all have going. What I want to talk about now is more on the relaxation side and looking at the benefits, other benefits of massage therapy. Today we have with us a guest. This is Andrea Hollinger. She is one of our licensed massage therapists at the spa at West Glen. She graduated from Le James in Cedar Falls in 2005. She then worked for four years at an Aveda salon in Cedar Falls. It was Jiva? Jiva. Jiva. <laughs> Up in Cedar Falls for four years. Then she made the move down to Des Moines, where she has been with us at the spa for the last seven years. So, um, first of all, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes, on. I'm glad you're here. So, the first thing is there are many different types of massage therapy. Mm -hmm. So can you just go through, in general, what some of the benefits are of massage? Oh my gosh, there's hundreds of benefits, but relaxation is a main one. Reducing stress, anxiety, depression, um, reducing muscle tension or chronic pain. Massage is really great for headaches, um, migraines. I mean, you can get into specific work where, you know, carpal tunnel it's really great for, or sciatica, or um, it increases um, circulation and lymph drainage. It's really great for people who have um, medical disorders as well as far as like fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. osteoarthritis, um, even people, patients that have cancer. Um, the side effects for cancer, there's so many, you know, nausea and whatnot, and uh, massage just helps kind of suppress yeah. that. Very good. So so if someone is going in for, they've never had a massage before, and they're going in um, to the spa or somewhere else, what, is, what can they expect? What will happen when they walk in the door for their massage? Um, yeah, you walk in, you check in with the concierge. They bring you back. You get into a nice, comfy robe. Um, you sit in our relaxation area. Um, your first time visiting, we do ask that you show up early so we can do some medical paperwork. Um, but yeah, you enjoy a glass of wine, hot tea, water. Your massage therapist will bring you back to the room and then kind of go from there. We, you know, we want to know your wants and your needs, what you're looking for out of your massage. Mm -hmm. And then we go from go there from and try there. there. Yeah. Okay, very good. So there are many, many different types of, of massage and massage techniques. We were just talking, there's probably well over 200 different techniques. Um, so at the spa at West Glen, we do offer a variety. So let's just talk about kind of the benefits of some of those. Sure. So um, I think when people think about massage, a lot of them think about the Swedish massage. Mm -hmm. So what are, the, what, are, what are the benefits of Swedish massage? So that is by far the most popular massage. Um, it's very general, um, but it's people come in for relaxation. You know, you can use, it starts at a medium pressure. We can go more or less from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's your basic relaxing massage. It's broader strokes, including effleurage, topodomate, um, uh, friction, 
but yeah, I mean, overall full body relaxation. relaxation. Okay, so relaxation, that's a very good way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, how about the hot stone therapy? So the hot stone is very similar to the Swedish massage. You're getting the broader strokes, um, also for re relaxation, except for you're using a warm stone as a tool. And with the warm stone, you can actually loosen up the muscles quite a bit more um, faster. And you can kind of dig in there a little bit more. Um, whereas a typical massage, you do want to warm up the soft tissues, mm -hmm. but with the hot stones, it just makes it a lot quicker a process. Okay, okay. Um, now the one that I think has a lot more detail to it is the deep tissue. Mm -hmm. So talk about, tell us about the deep tissue massages. So um, there's a huge um, misunderstanding about deep tissue. A lot of people think it just means deep pressure. And Yes, you can use deep pressure with a deep tissue, but deep tissue massage is actually working on specific muscles. Um, so this is great for if you're having problem areas. Um, you know, we you come in and we try to only focus on those problem areas because it would probably take close to 14 hours to do a detailed deep tissue massage full body. So yeah, you're working on specific muscles, trying to relieve whatever you're looking for, tension, stress, pain, chronic pain, um, and it, and then you can kind of branch off from there. There's different modalities um, that you can incorporate with deep tissue, like neuromuscular, trigger point. Um, just because you're having an ache in the low back doesn't mean that it's actually caused from the low back. It could be caused from the gluteal group muscles or your hamstrings or your abdomen, like things that you don't necessarily think of. And so we try to focus on those areas to relieve what the issue is. Okay. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it with the deep tissue, but this is strictly for if you're having problem areas. And you can do any type of pressure. You can, st if you need a light touch, we can do a light touch. If you like the heavier pressure, you can do the heavier pressure. Um, with the, it's a technique, so what you wanna do, like I said, you wanna warm up the muscles, the soft tissues first. I mean, you when you go to somebody's house, you wanna knock on the front door. You just don't wanna barge in and let yourself mm -hmm. in. Same thing with massage, you just don't wanna dig in there. Um, you kinda want the muscle to let you in because as the muscle lets you in, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper with the lightest touch. Okay, very so. good, awesome. Um, and then briefly, let's talk about reflexology because that is something that you do at the spa. So yes. what is reflexology? Um, so reflexology um, corresponds to the hands and the feet and you have different areas on the feet and hands that correspond to different body parts, organs, glands. And by working on those areas, you're stimulating that particular area of the body. Um, the cool thing about it is when I'm working on my clients, I could be working on the stomach and all of a sudden their stomach will growl or working on their shoulder and they feel a sensation. Um, although, you know, some people come in just because they love a great foot massage, but you leave feeling like you've had a full body massage because it stimulates the entire body. Very good. Okay. And then um, the last one, pregnancy massage. Mm -hmm. So for um, our pregnant clients, what are the benefits there? Um, same as any benefits that I mentioned before, but it's really great for, you know, soreness, aches, pains, um, pregnancy, carpal tunnel, or the mimics of carpal tunnel, or sciatica is really common. Mm -hmm. You know, we go and help that areas. Swelling, um, depression, anxiety, all things that can also be associated with hormones. Um, so yeah, that helps relieve it. And at the spa, we have a pregnancy pillow that allows our women to lay face down if they're comfortable. It is a hit. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can get a pregnancy massage up until your full term and even a little past, because once you go full term, then we can start working on pressure points to kind of help move you along, mm -hmm. kind of naturally induce. Okay. Um, the only thing with pregnancy, if you are high risk, um, just 
see, you know, get a doctor approval first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there age limits for massages? Upper age limits, lower age limits? You know, there's not. Massage is great for all ages. Okay. Newborns, infants, children. Um, those are the massages that are encouraged by parents, though, because there's that special bonding. Um, but elderly people, they love their massages. You know, you just have to be more gentle with them, but that healing of touch is so powerful. So yeah, I mean, all ages are great. And is there someone who wants to get into a nice regimen? What's the frequency someone should get a massage? Um, it depends what they're coming in for. If they're coming in for chronic pain, aches, pains, you know, you may want to come in every other week, maybe even more frequently. You know, if you're just trying to just maintain, once a month for maintenance is great. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. A lot of great information. So if you're looking for a massage, whether it's for relaxation or that nagging muscle ache, um, call the spa at West Glen. Andrea is there along with some of our other massage therapists. When you call, give us some information on what you're looking for and we can help guide you to the right massage for you, whether it's that relaxation or that deeper tissue. We'd love to see you at the spa at West Glen and this is The Heidi Cook Show.